great to meet you. Thanks, Giles. Uh, in her efforts to get close to wildlife, Miranda Kristofnikov tried most of the tricks in the book. Mm, she's thrown herself off cliffs into freezing water to get close to kitty wakes and seals. And even once sang a duet very prettily with a wren. Tonight we find Miranda in Oxfordshire with a kindred spirit, a man who's not quite flying with birds, but not far off it. Something strange has been spotted in the skies over Didcot. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? Well, actually, it's a combination of the two. It's the world's first remote-controlled red kite, and it's well on the way to helping scientists unravel the secrets of bird flight. It may even change the face of aviation. Malcolm Beard is a former British remote-controlled plane champion who specialises in getting aerial footage from remote aircraft. And he noticed that local red kites were showing an interest in his helicopter. Well, I've been flying radio-controlled model helicopters with cameras on for quite a few years. And as the population increased around this area, I find that kites would quite often come up and have a look at the helicopter and then just stay out of range. I could never quite get a good shot of them. So I thought I'd try and build something that looked like a kite that I could put a camera on and hopefully tempt them a little bit closer. Red kites are aerial acrobats. They twist and turn incredibly quickly to catch thermals and find food. So, to tempt kites close enough to get good footage, Malcolm set about trying to make a model. With a wingspan of nearly two metres, it looks like a real kite, apart from the propeller. The biggest key to its amazing flight turned out to be the tail. Well, when you look at the real birds, they twist their tails. Um, they move their wings an awful lot as well, but one of the key things when you look at a red kite is how much they twist the tails, the tails left and right. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. So I've modelled that as well by allowing this to twist left and right. Today, Malcolm has invited me along for a test flight, and we're hoping that some red kites will come and fly with us. OK, so this is your control unit. Right, you're, you're going to let me, let me loose with this. I will, yes. <laughs> to get any shots of curious kites, Malcolm's installed a remote-controlled camera, and that's my job. This is controlling the camera, so it's all on the right-hand stick there. You Ooh. move the stick to the right, the camera goes to the right. You move yeah. it to the left, it goes to the left. It does as well. Pull it back. So, after a quick lesson, it's time to take to the skies. Take it away. OK. Oh, where can I go? This area has a resident population of kites and incredibly, within 30 seconds, we have our first visitor. Ooh. Whoa, look at them all coming in now. It's amazing. Red kites are inquisitive birds and have spotted a stranger in the group. They're here to check it out. They're really interested, aren't they? It's got this faint hum of the propeller. And otherwise, it looks like just, just part of the gang. I've never seen anything like it. I almost can't tell who's you and who's them. It's the one without the wings flapping, generally. <laughs> so now we have kites flying close. It's time for me to try and get some footage. <gasps> this bird's eye view means we can see exactly how they're controlling their flight. Its tail is constantly, constantly just adjusting, and this is exactly what Malcolm's doing with ours. But red kites aren't the only ones intrigued by Malcolm's model. Robokite has also attracted the attention of Dr Graham Taylor, a researcher in bird flight and aviation at Oxford University. Now, Graham, how does the research work that you're doing fit in with what Malcolm's doing? Well, I'm interested in understanding how a bird is able to achieve such spectacular manoeuvrability and just to fly in conditions like we've had today. Yeah. Malcolm makes it look easy, actually, but the birds make it look even more so. One of the interesting things from talking to Malcolm is that he's gone through much the same process as a bird has to do in, in learning how to fly with a tail like this. Graham's looking at bird flight partly to see if it could make our planes fly more efficiently. Right now, big planes tend to have a vertical tail fin to help control movement. If you look at a commercial airliner, a very large proportion of the cost of the fuel on a transatlantic flight is due to this vertical tail fin that the, the aircraft has and the bird doesn't. Really? So if we can understand how it is that a bird manages to get away with a horizontal tail, uh, then we can begin to make fuel savings and uh, other benefits of efficiency and manoeuvrability on an aircraft. So, in years to come, aeroplanes could be more kite-like in their design. 
thanks in part to Malcolm and his robo kite. Fascinating. So, in a similar vein.